Okay, the first step is to go to this website, cloudskillsboost.google. It will automatically take you to cloudskillboost.google slash journeys. And your, your screen might be a bit different from mine, so don't worry. Once you're here, uh, by default, I guess it gets into this path tab, but let's search explore to find our activity for today. And on the search bar, okay, sorry for that. Let's try Kubernetes Cloud. And this is the name of our quest, Kubernetes in Google Cloud. Let's click on it. Um, I'm already joined into this. I believe it asks you first to join to this activity. Just click join or accept. And here you will be able to see the activities that it comprise. The first lab is called Introduction to Docker, the second Kubernetes Engine, Kiwik Start. The interesting thing, the interesting part here is that it takes you through, gives you an idea of how much time it will take you to go through over. So it, the first one is 45 minutes, the second 45 minutes as well. And the third one is it gets more interesting because we will moving into orchestra orchestrating the cloud with Kubernetes um, and these two last, I haven't done it yet, managing deployments using Kubernetes engine and continuous delivery with Jenkins in Kubernetes engine. The last two, they will require five credits. So let's start with the very first one and let's see. So this is the structure of of how this platform works. Uh, you got this activity, the name of the activity, uh, a summary of all the tasks that you will be going through. Uh, it says it will take you around an hour and uh, you will require one credit. But the positive aspect of this platform is that you will have uh, written instructions on each step by step. Once you get familiar, you will see that in most cases, the very first uh, lines or paragraph are almost always the same. But the this is how it, you will use it. First, read the requirements, things you have to do previously in order everything to work around. Then divided by task, it will provide you the code and an explanation of what do you have to enter? You can copy just to avoid typos. Enter the commands in the cloud and it shows you what usually you should be getting there. In case that it's not always just copy and paste, in case you might need to edit a few fields, it will tell you clearly, please edit this with your proper information. So my Recommendation is to first go over through all the tasks so you get a feeling of what you will be doing. Then, once you reach uh, all this, is when you should click start the lab and this timer will start running. So, it asks in me, let's say I'm not a robot. Okay, let's choose cars and launch with one credit. If you have credit, do it like that. So, okay, now it's open, it allows me to work. And if we go to task number one, or the set of requirement better, it will tell you from the very first point, click on start lab. It recommends using the incognito browser, so you might not be messing around with... The purposes of using a private browser is that, as I told you, it requires credits and you don't want to Google or charge you something 
unexpectedly. So if you're going to the private browser and you use your account with the free credit provider, there's no way it's going to mix with your um, personal account. So this is basically why they ask you to use a private browser. Uh, yeah, I am not doing so. I'd rather do this on my own. And uh, once you click start, it says open the Google console and here things get interesting. It asks you for an email or phone and uh, the username. This should be your username. The same username it's here. So please copy this, enter this and click next. Then it will ask your password. This is your password. So the way it works, it this platform works, it creates a temporary user for each of these activities. So please get familiar with this part because you will be doing this very often. Now I agree with the terms. I will agree with this and I don't want to receive emails. So yes. And perfect. Now here we are. Let me remove my face from the screen. And now what we're seeing here is Google Cloud. This is the same interface all professional uses. This is where all work is done. It's not different from professional environment. Uh, this is the difference. This, pa this page is for training purpose. This one is also for training purpose, but it's the real thing. So if you want to get familiar with Google Cloud, here you are. There's nothing else than this. A bunch of tools, a bunch of menus. So we will just focus on these instructions. But once we are logging with our information, let's get our hands in here and see what is the next step. Click on uh, uh, open Google console. We already did that. Create, copy the username. We already did this. We're fine. And okay, activate Cloud Shell. Click activate Cloud Shell at the top of the Google Cloud Console. Here it is. What are we doing? Um, this is a sort of terminal that we got in the cloud so we can enter commands uh, using type in this. When you're connected, you are already authenticated and the project is set to your project ID Check this out, your project ID is on this side of the screen. The output contains a line that declares the project ID for this session. Let's see if this is true. Your cloud platform project in this session is set to this number, which should be this number, 5271. 5271. Yep, that's correct. This is optional. You can list all the active account name with this command and click authorize. So let's get familiar. Um, you will receive many of this instruction, like first understand what you're doing. So we're enabling this terminal available in Google Cloud. Um, and now with this command, we will authorize it as it says, and we'll see. The active user, which is this one. And another additional point is you can list the project IDs with this command and we should get something like this. Let's see if this is true and copy paste. And it says, yeah, this is your project and this is your configuration. Nice, sweet. So 
This is our first task. Let's see what this is about. Hello world. In Cloud Shell, enter the following command to run a hello world container to get started. So, if I run this, let's see if what happens. A bunch of things happen here. So, Docker run hello world. Unable to find image hello world latest locally, latest pulling from library hello, then pull is complete. The digest, the status is downloaded to a newer image for hello world latest and hello from Docker. This message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly. Yep, and that's true. Now, we're on the following command to take a look at the container image it pulled from the Docker hub. Let's see. Let's go down there, let's paste our command. And indeed, here we have the, repos the repository name, the image ID, and the size, a small one. So this image is pulled from the Docker Hub public registry. Let's run it again. Yep, hello from Docker. This message shows that your installation appeared to be working correctly. Finally, look at the running containers by running the following command. Indeed, there is this container running. Continue. Container ID, image, ports, and command. In order to see all containers, including ones that have finished executing run docker ps slash slash. Always copy this because it's better to avoid typos. Well, as we ran this twice, we can see it here twice. Okay, we run our first Kubernetes container. Um, our task two, what is it about? In this section, you will build a Docker image that, that's based on a simple node application. Execute the following command to create and switch into a folder named test. Okay, let's do that. Let's go. That was quick. Now, two, to create a Docker file. Okay. This file instructs a Docker diamond on how to build your image. The initial line specifies the base current image, which in this case is the official Docker image for node version long term support. And the second, which is this, and the second, you set the working or current directory on the container. And the third, you add the current directory's content, indicated by dot, into the container, and then expose the container's port so it can be accept connections on that port. And finally, Round the node command to start the application. So let's copy this, let's go to the terminal back, paste it, press enter, and voila. Now, you'll write the node application, and after that, you'll build the image. This is a simple HTTPS server that listens in port 80 and returns hello world. So let's go over through the code. So it creates, okay, to create a node application app.js. Lessons on port 80. So it creates this. 
and returns hello world. Yep, the server is listening. And that's correct. Now, step number four. Note again, the dot, which means current directory. So you need to run this command from within the directory that has the Docker file. It might take a couple of minutes for this command to finish executing. When it does, your output should resemble to the following. Let's see. It's well, it's currently working. Now run the following command to look at the images you built. Oh, that's cool. We already built an image. How nice is that? Here they are. 28 seconds ago. Notice the node is the base image and node app is the image we just built. So where are you? This is the one. Specifically. How cool is that? We just built an image. It's quite easy and fast. Now, our task number three uses code to run containers based on the image you built. Let's see that. Yep, server running at here. The dash dash name flag allows you to name the container if you like. The dash p instructs Docker to map the host port 4000 to the container's port 80. Now you can reach the server at this address without port mapping. You would not be able to reach the container at localhost. Open another terminal in Cloud Shell, click the plus icon and test the server. So let's do that. Let's open another terminal in Cloud Shell. Uh, I should think it will go over here. Open a new tab. Let's connect in. And if we paste, let's, let's copy it. Copy. Let's paste it here. And here it is, it responds. Hello world. The container will run as long as the initial terminal is running. If you want the container to run in the background, you need to specify the slash D flag. Close the initial terminal and then run the following command to stop and remove the container. So this was or initial terminal, let's close that as instruction. And they're asking me to run this command. Oh, let's copy paste. Copy and let's paste this command to see what happens. It should stop. See? My app, my app, yeah. Now, run the following command to start the container in the background. Here it is. Sweet. Notice the container is running in the output of Docker PS. You can look at the logs by executing docker logs container ID. Oh, that's nice. 
point that you don't have to write the entire container ID. So as long as the initial characters uniquely identify the container, for example, let's, they tried for this ID, they tried the first three. So let's do that. What was our container ID? D42 in this case. So D42 E server running. Yep. That's true. Now modify the application. In your cloud shell, open the test directory you created earlier in the lab. So CD is to change, so we're changing to test. Here we are, into test. Now we have to edit the app.js file with a text editor and replace hello world with another string. In this case, they replace it with welcome to cloud. So to edit this file, app.js, we will type nano app.js. It will open up the file with the arrows of your keyboards. It will display until it says hello world. We want to write welcome to cloud and to save this we will press Control X and then it asks save modify buffer we will press Y key and it will ask file name to write app.js yes we will press enter now And uh, now we build this new image and tag it with 0 0.2 with this code. And uh, run another container with a new image version. So this code, it has a 0 0.2. So let's run another image. and we will test it. Let's welcome to cloud. There it is. And if we run, and now we test the first container, which is on board 4000, we should get hello world. Yep, there it is. Now, task number four, debug. Now that you're familiar with building and running containers, go over some debugging practices. You can look at the logs of the container using Docker logs. So let's do that. And now we will have to replace this container ID with this number. Well, we don't need the whole number. We can write C, the very first three digits. CE2. Let's write. Oh. CE2. Because my container ID starts by CE2. You will write yours. And it says running. Yep. Sometimes you will want to start an interactive bash session inside the running container. You can use docker exez to do this so open another terminal in cloud shell and copy this command to open a new terminal remember go to this plus sign and let's paste this mm, it says everything from diamond mm. oh for sure i forgot the container id <laughs> um sorry for that in my case is C E two. So let's do that again. This is C E two and bash. And here we are. So 
So let's look at the directory, type in ls, we're inside here, we got a Docker file and the app, the app.js file. And to get out of here, we'll just type exit. Exit. Now we see we, we changed that. You can determine a container's made up data in Docker by using Docker inspect. Always, you will have to remember your container ID minus CE2. So let's go and uh, this. And Docker inspect CE2, your container ID, and here it is all that information. Additionally, use format to inspect specific fields from the return JSON. So let's do this. And at the end, remember to delete container ID for the number. And here we have the output. Be sure to check out the following Docker documentation resources for more information on debugging. And our task number five will be to publish. Now that you're going to push your image to Google Artifact Registry, after that, you'll remove all containers and images to simulate a fresh environment and then pull and run your containers. This will demonstrate your portability of Docker containers. To push images to your private registry hosted by Artifact Registry, you need to tag the images with the registry name. Format is regional repository, Docker, and all this. So let's do that. Uh, let's create the target Docker repository. You must create a repository before you can push any images to it. Pushing an image can trigger creation of a repository and the cloud build service account does not have permission to create repository. So from the navigation menu under CI CD, navigate to artifact registry repository. So let's go where is artifact registry. I'll prefer to search here artifact registry. Uh, it says go to repository. Mm -hmm. Here we have repositories. Let me get rid of this to get more space. Uh, let me minimize this for now. Here we are. Uh, we type artifact registry on the search bar and now on our left panel we clicked on repositories. Let's click create a repository and specify my repository as the repository name. Here we have create repository. This is our name, my repository. Choose Docker as a format. Here it is, Docker. Under location type, select region, and then choose this one, US Central 1, Iowa. Region, under location type, region, and US Central 1, Iowa. Click create. Here we have our button for create. In the meantime, let's go through the instructions. Configure authentic authentication before you can push or pull images. Configure Docker to use the Google Cloud command line interface. So, and to do that, To set up authentication to Docker repositories in the region, US Central won't run the following command in Cloud Shell. So, let's go back to Cloud Shell. Here we are. We will run that command. Uh, do you want to continue? Yes, we want to continue. It says repositories is successfully created. Docker configuration file updated. Enter yes when prompted. Yes, we did that. Now push the container to artifact registry. Um, 
run the following command to set your project ID and change into the directory. So we will copy this and uh, let's see. Uh, Export project ID, gcloud config get value project. Yeah, it should take it by default. Let's see. Yep. So run the command to tag the you no know, app. Oh, it's not this one. All right. Let's go back and copy the command to tag the app. So copy Docker bill. Yeah, this one. Docker bill. I just build it. Now run the following command to check your Bell Docker images. Let's save what's created. There they are. And push this to artifact registry. It's pushing. Yep. After Bill finishes uh, from the navigation menu under CI CD navigate to artifact registry repositories, let's go again to repositories here. Click on my repository and you should see your node app Docker container created. Let's, well, it's working on it, but after that, it should be created in here. We didn't see it yet because it's working on it. But let's give it a few minutes. And once this is done, we will verify it here. After the creation, we will just test it. And that will be all. So let's go again. Repositories. My repository. Here it is, no doubt. You could start a new VM, SSH, into that VM and install gcloud. For simplicity, we just remove all containers and images to simulate a fresh environment. So stop and remove all containers. See that? This. You have to remove child images of node before you remove the node image. Okay. Now run the following command to remove all of the Docker images. We did it. At this point, you should have a sort of fresh environment. Pull the image and run it. Oh, it says empty reply from server. What did I miss? Mm hmm. Oh, I, what I miss. So let, let's see something here. Uh, we remove all containers and yeah, this might be the error that project ID, I should have typed this one. So let's, let's just stop and remove all containers again. Copy, paste. Okay, now on this, let's paste this and we need this information. Let's move where it says project ID and let's delete project ID, let's paste project ID. And now let's pull the images. 
copy again, let's paste that in this part where this is project ID. Let's copy again. Let's edit this project ID. Oh, I miss. I was supposed to change it twice, so. Let's go over it one more time because I did not got the correct output, so. Let's, one more, let's go one more time. Let's go for project ID. And I have to change this here. And also here. Okay. So remember that when running this command, you have to change your project ID on this part of the code and on this part of the command and this part of the command. And this should be the output. Welcome to cloud. We got welcome to cloud. If we check our progress, this should be done. Let's see. And our assessment is complete. So basically we start running um, to create a hello world container. Then we build with this code an app. We created a Docker files and we created this this node file, or app.js, we run it, and the process of running this, we the purpose of this program was just to print a hello world. Then we edit the file using nano, and instead of hello world, we wrote welcome to cloud, then we were able to run it twice, or to test two different uh, containers. The first one, welcome to the cloud and second hello world. After checking a few checking a few debugging techniques, we were uh, able to use several commands, always keeping tracking of the container IDs when we were able to troubleshoot. And we published our containers into Google Artifact Registry. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching and for congrats for finishing your first lap. Thank you guys.